All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about how to construct your argument. And when we talk about argument, we're not talking about fighting with someone, you know, you're not gonna be taking blows or anything like that. When we talk about an argument, we're talking about it in the academic sense that an argument is the point that you're trying to make. In fact, we're gonna explain exactly what argument compared to other things are in this video. So, okay. All right, so when you are making an argument, you're gonna construct an argument, one of the first things you have to do is you have to know the point that you're trying to make. And as part of making your point, you have to develop a thesis statement. A thesis statement is your claim or the point that you're trying to make. And preferably, it's condensed down to a very clear and concise and accurate statement which we call a thesis statement. A statement that when someone hears it, they know one, that's the promise you're making to your reader, and two, they know exactly the point you're trying to make, and there's no confusion. It's very clear and articulate. Once you've developed your thesis statement, you need to identify the evidence that you're going to use to support your thesis. Um, Having evidence to do that is, it's not optional, it's absolutely necessary. Uh, because again, your thesis statement is a promise that you make and the evidence that you use is how you keep that promise to your viewer, to your reader, to your audience. After you've done that, you need to choose an appropriate set of rhetorical strategies that you're going to use to make your point. Now, rhetorical strategies are, are something that may come very naturally, or it might be something that you have to plan out and think about. But we're gonna talk about that in just a little bit. Okay, so let's talk about the difference between reason. Let's talk about the difference between reason and arguing, right? Reason is it's, it's a process in and of itself. It's the process that you use to make a decision, right? Argumentation, on the other hand, is the process you use to make your point. So reason should come first, and argumentation comes second. What you don't see, the audience doesn't see the reasoning process, right? They don't see when you haven't made your decision yet. They see the argumentation side. Uh, reason is the work you do before you can argue a point. That's incredibly important because when you, when you first uh, approach a topic, you need to do it with an open mind, okay? So um, let's say you know what your topic is. I mean, obviously knowing your topic is, <laughs> is where it starts, right? You have to know what the topic is and as you become familiar, you need to understand what the different viewpoints are. What do, what are different people saying about that topic that is debatable? Because there's nothing to argue if there's nothing to debate. They go hand in hand. After you've looked at the different viewpoints, you need to look at the evidence. What evidence is available for each of these topics that you can review and making your decision? Because again, Reason requires that you are objective, that you don't already have a decision made, or at least that you're willing to consider other viewpoints before you make a final decision. Okay. You also need to decide how you're going to go about reviewing the evidence. And it doesn't have to be fancy, you just need to be aware and having a process helps you to do that effectively. So how are you gonna look at the different evidence? Um, this could include the sources that you're going to use, which we'll talk about in another video later. As you look at the evidence that's available, you also need to answer whether or not you need to gather more information to make a decision or to justify the decision that you think you're gonna make. 
And then once you've looked at everything, you also need to figure out how you're going to make a decision. And hopefully all these steps, you know, they, they may not go in a, in a direct path. They might cycle and that's very reasonable, but hopefully, um, using steps like this will help you to make an informed decision instead of, well, let's look at what the opposite would be. The opposite of going through a reasoned process like this is that you start by having made a decision without having looked at both sides, without having looked at the evidence. It makes it very difficult to one, be aware of the topic because you don't know any side except your own and that's assuming that you know the one side of the argument. It's, it's really hard to make an effective uh, claim if you don't know what other people have said, especially those who might disagree with the decision you've made. You don't wanna do that because you're not gonna have much credibility as an author if you can't speak very clearly and coherently about what other people have said. Does that make sense? Okay, so after you've gone through a reason process, then you're prepared to actually make a case because now you know the issue. Now you know the evidence and now you know where you came out on, on which side of the issue. Okay, so having done that, here are steps, and they don't have to necessarily go in this order, but here are steps you're gonna wanna use to present your argument to others. Now this could literally be an outline that you use. Um, if you leave out any of these steps, you're probably gonna have a problem, but you can mix and match and rearrange them based on whatever is effective for the point that you're trying to make. But the one thing that you don't see here on this list is you making a decision because that has now already happened as you've reasoned it. Okay, so these are steps you, you really need to make an effective argument or to be persuasive. You need to make, you need to introduce the topic and you do this for two reasons. One, you introduce the topic so that your reader knows all the basic information so that they're ready to understand what you're about to explain to them, right? They don't need to know everything, but they need to know enough. And so that's your purpose for introduction. As part of your introduction, you should also introduce your claim, your thesis statement, the point that you are trying to convince them of based on the reason that you've, uh, the reasoning process that you've gone through. Having done that, you present your evidence, your main ideas, um, and these should be designed to support your claim. Everything you do goes back to the claim. If you are including anything in your argument that has nothing to do with your claim or others' claims, you're off track and you're wasting their time and your time and you're probably not being very effective either. So you present your main ideas. Then, and this is super important, you have to address opposing viewpoints. And we refer to this as objections. The objections that others might make, the, the viewpoints of others, and you have to include their best evidence. If you don't include the best evidence of opposing viewpoints, it weakens your argument because you are committing a logical fallacy. Logical fallacy is a mistake in reason and in argumentation. It's a mistake, especially if your audience understands the topic that you're talking about. They will recognize the evidence you're not using and you will lose credibility because they will know what you're avoiding. Now, this can happen on purpose or this can happen on accident. You don't want it to happen either way because if it's on purpose, you look like a coward. If, if it's on accident, you just look dumb and neither one of those things are good. So you have to address the most competitive arguments against your own. Now, because you entered the reasoning process with an open mind, we hope that you chose the best side, right? Not the one, 
that was more convenient or that agreed with what you thought previous to your research, what you want to, you know, hopefully you've, you've agreed with the best side, which makes it easier to acknowledge the benefit and the good points that others make. Because in the end, they're not more persuasive because you've already looked at everything, right? Okay, so your objection uh, or the, the objection of others, you, uh, you summarize, then you respond. You don't just leave it out there. You, you address it directly. And because you know you have the better answer or a superior answer in, in whatever sense you found valuable when you, you made your decision, um, you respond to it directly and you explain and you justify and you use your sources after you've done that, you've already made your case. All you have to do is close it out with a conclusion. And your conclusion should try to do a couple of things. One, you remind the reader again of the point that you're trying to make. Now that should be clear because you've made it the entire time, but you say it again, and then you explain through summary how the evidence you've presented supports or justifies the argument that you're making. So every step of the way, you're making your point. With the introduction, you're setting up your point and you introduce it. Um, with the main ideas, you are literally giving evidence to support your viewpoint. With the objection, you recognize the strong viewpoints of others. And then with your rebuttal, you respond and explain how your viewpoint is superior to others. And then you explain these things again in shortened form in the conclusion, where you restate your thesis, your claim, and you summarize the evidence that supports your claim. And by then, you've made your point several times, you've been very effective, and you're done. Make sense? Okay, so, um, this is the, the first in several videos to, to explain this topic. It's, there's so much more that can be said about this, um, but these points are, are true. And they've been developed for thousands of years. And it's, it's still an incredibly effective process. And it's kind of an honest process too, which is, I think, why it's so persuasive. Now, you think about this in conjunction with the things we've talked about in previous videos, about thinking about the audience, about credibility, about the actual logic of the argument that you're making, you put it all together, you can make a very persuasive argument. So I hope that this video was helpful to you, um, that you find it valuable. And if you have any questions, ask me in the comments below. Thanks for watching.